So hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 4 of our F1 Manager 23 series. Hope you're doing very, very well. Now if you didn't go back and watch the last episode, definitely go back and watch that. It was the Australian Grand Prix and as you can see on the right hand side, Max Verstappen won from Charles Leclerc and Checo Perez was in P3. It was a double point scoring weekend for us at Alpine. Ocon in P9 and Pierre Gasly in P10. We're not doing too bad, but we are having some major problems with pit stops at this moment in time, which has prompted uh, a little bit of an inquiry into it. And at the moment, we are currently making sure that we are trying to minimize the mistakes. That is the training focus at the minute. We'll get the speed once we've stopped the mistakes happening because really that has cost us quite a bit in the last few races. Standings wise, let's bring you up to date with that. In the Constructors Championship, Red Bull flying high, of course. Ferrari in P2 and Aston Martin in P3. We're currently in P5 with eight points. We would certainly take that at the end of the season. Driver standings wise, Max Verstappen is top on 77 points. Three races, three wins. He's just class in tech. Sergio Perez in P2. Leclerc and Sainz, the two Ferraris looking pretty strong in P3 and 4. 9th and 10th for Ocon and Gasly, but both on four points. Sharing the workload very nicely between the pair of them. This weekend, we go to Baku. Now, this is one of my favourite circuits. We are going to Baku. It's a sprint weekend as well, so this is something that we've not experienced before. We're going to get into all that. Uh, if we have a look round here, expect a strategy is a one-stop from medium onto hard. Uh, and the car attributes, low speed cornering and top speed is very, very important round here. Just to bring you up to date with the car parts development, we have had a new chassis and suspension coming in before this next race. So that's something to keep an eye on. And if we just have a look at the rank on the grid, we are in the high speed corners. We are very, very good now. We are the third best car on the grid in high speed cornering. We are making improvements, but we are about the fifth best car. Fighting for P9 and 10 is about where we are at the moment. But it's a sprint weekend. Anything can happen. So we're going to get to qualifying and this new sprint format here on F1 Manager 23. Let's get to Baku. And the race weekend continues. Here we are now at qualifying. In a format familiar to our drivers, three parts of qualifying will decide who sits where on the sprint race grid. A good performance today will give them a real advantage for the rest of the weekend. And here's a driver there's been quite a focus on recently, Karun, Valtteri Bottas. Looking at the lap times, we saw a real lack of pace from them in practice. They never looked quite comfortable with the setup and they'll need to try something new for qualifying if they want to get past Q1. And with that, let's get back onto the track. So final flying laps in Q2 and we need a performance to get, in, get into Q3. Esteban Ocon is green through the first and second sectors. Will he do enough to get through to Q3? We have got an old style sprint format here this weekend where qualifying decides the grid for the sprint race and then we can adjust the position for Sunday's Grand Prix from the sprint race. Ocon's through. Gasly isn't. Gasly all the way down in P13. Not good news for Pierre, but we have one car into Q3. And you join us back, final flying lap in Q3. Esteban Ocon on a fresh set of soft compound tyres. Will he manage to improve on P9? I don't think he's going to be able to look at the cars that's in front of him. But Esteban Ocon looks across the line. Will he beat George Russell? He won't, he only improves slightly and he will start in P9 for the sprint tomorrow. And the grid for the sprint race makes some interesting reading. Charles Leclerc is on pole, signs on P2, it's both Ferraris on the front row. Then comes Fernando Alonso, the Red Bulls in P4 and 5. Then comes Lance Stroll, then the two Mercedes and then it's us with Esteban Ocon in P9. Williams looking strong in P10 and 11 and Gasly a little bit further back in P13. Let's have a look at the strategy and what tyres we're going to be using in this sprint. Well, guys, there's not much strategy about it. Soft compound tyres for both cars. That's obviously the quicker tyre. Should quite easily get us through to 17 laps in this race. So let's just go for it, see what we can do. Maybe Gasly can get up a couple of positions. That would be ideal. Ocon, I can't see him catching most of the cars in front of him, but you never know. Let's not be negative. Let's get to five red lights for our first sprint race of the season. Our sprint today sees the drivers take on 17 laps of the Baku City Circuit. Expect to see plenty making the most of Baku's long, wide main straight. That's going to be their best chance to overtake and secure a strong result. 
a sprint victory and points off for grabs right here. Now's the time for the sprint here in Baku. And it's lights out and away we go. And away we go. And we were all looking very relaxed on the Alpine pit wall. And straight away, we are going to ride on board with Esteban Ocon. Who thought, do you know what? We might as well make here while the sun shines and have a go at uh, George Russell straight away. Not managed to get a move done in to turn one. Meanwhile, Pierre Gasly fighting hard with Kevin Magnussen's actually lost the position off the start. K might get in front of Gasly there. Gasly's not been possibly as quick as we would like him to be in the last couple of races. Um, I expected a little bit more, but maybe that's me from my time Aston Martin with him on last year's game. But on lap one, Fernando Alonso is the big mover and shaker because he is attacking Carlos Sainz through the middle section. And it's got to be said, Checo Perez already up to P4, Verstappen in behind Stroll as well. Perez is ducking left and right, but not managing to make a move at this moment in time. But we will ride on board with Fernando Alonso through the castle section on the visor cam. My word, you get really get the sense of the twisty and turn, twisty and turny section of the castle section. I love that bit in the Baku circuit. Meanwhile, Esteban Ocon lost a position to Logan Sargent. Down to P10 is Esteban Ocon. And under threat from Alexander Albon in the Williams. So at the moment, Esteban Ocon struggling a little bit against these Williams cars. Meanwhile, Pierre Gasly already losing touch with Kevin Magnussen. We're going to tell him to get on with it um, and try his best to uh, to catch up with K-Mag because we cannot lose the RS of those cars in front if we're Pierre Gasly. Lap one, Leclerc leads from signs. The two Ferraris going at it. Fernando Alonso a little bit further back. Then comes Perez, Stroll, Verstappen, two Mercedes, Hamilton and Russell. Very much setting the pace of their own at the moment. Sergeant 1.8 seconds back. Ocon attacking at Logan Sargent, but actually defending from Alexander Albon. Does well. Magnussen has a little look around the outside. Doesn't manage to get it done into that corner, but now this might give Esteban a little bit of time to not defend as the two cars behind him battle. And we're looking at Pierre Gasly thinking, whereabouts are you, kid? Because you've got to catch up with these cars in front, and he's really struggling to at this moment in time. And all the rest of the cars behind him have got DRS, and Pierre Gasly hasn't lapped it. Quite worryingly for this week, and as we're on to, uh, on to coming on to lap three, we don't seem to have the pace of the Haas and the Williams at this moment in time. We're doing his absolute utmost to keep up with these cars, but we are struggling. It must be said, Magnussen and Sargent are really, really got it over Ocon at this moment in time. He's in P11, still chasing down the two cars in front, and Gasly is attacking Albon. He should have a little bit of DRS he has. Albon hasn't got DRS, so will Gasly manage to make a move? Not at this moment in time. That Williams, just as in real life, is rapid in a straight line. Esteban Ocon doing everything he can to keep up with Kevin Magnussen. It's still from signs from Leclerc at the front. And the two Ferraris, there's no team orders there, are fighting each other. Perez a little bit further back, but he's under pressure from Fernando Alonso. Who looks to go down the inside of Perez. And now it's going to be a drag race up to the next corner. But Checo Perez in the Red Bull looks like he's got it covered off. Lap four. five, Gasly and Albon absolutely going at it. They've been side by side for most of this lap. We just seem to be very level paced. Gasly is doing everything he can, but he's battling for P12 here with a Williams. It's not looking promising at all. Albon's got the inside line for this next tight right-hander, but they're never going to go side by side through the castle section, or are they? As we ride on board with Pierre Gasly, he sticks to the left-hand side, Albon to the right. We managed to just about get through safely. And at this moment in time, it's just a consistent battle between Gasly and Albon. At the moment, Sainz and Leclerc look untouchable in the Ferraris at the moment. Ocon just about sticking with Logan Sargent in the Williams. Lap, Lap 9, Ocon has just got past Logan Sargent, but we have got a crash on circuit. And I'm hoping we are going to get a replay. We are. We are going to get a replay. Let's have a little look. And it's never. It's going to be the two McLarens, Norris and Piastri. Piastre, I mean, that looked a bit intentional, would you say? Uh, we know Carlos Sainz uh, a couple of weekends ago did blame Piastri for his lack of racing prowess and experience. And we have got a red flag, red flag in the sprint race. And the red flag has been caused by the Alpha Tauri of De Vries getting it all wrong into the barriers. And that is going to be very, very frustrating for the Alpha Tauri garage. 
But we have got a red flag. Let's have a look at what we could do from here. The sprint can restart. The second restart. Here we go then for the second start of the weekend so far. It must be said, one little thing to note was during that first stint, although we were struggling a little bit, we can see Esteban Ocon getting the inside on Magnus and early doors here. Um, and Gasly straight away as well attacking uh, Logan Sargent down the uh, into turn two. He manages to get a decent ish exit. But one thing we did notice from that first stint was the tyre wear. Our tyre wear seems superior to a lot of cars on the grid. Now, whether that was just just in whether that was just something that happened whether the the drivers were managing it better i'm not too sure but we were battling but there was one point the, the cars around us were on 80 percent tire wear we were on 86 percent which bodes very well for sunday's grand prix when we want to be saving tires but at the moment ocon is uh he's looking okay he's now tucked up behind lance stroll in the aston martin and gasly is looking to attack logan Sargent. so it's been a decent restart from us basically kept position but uh, pierre gasly i reckon he could get p10 today if he plays his cards right and on lap 13 he's joining his bike with pierre gasly once again attacking kevin magnuson doing a fantastic job we're, we are going to tell him to deploy actually and see if we can get past magnuson here we can't magnuson looks to have that straight line speed and in fact he's attacking esteban ocon and we're going to get the view of this magnuson gains a couple of positions there and manages to get past uh get past esteban ocon in the alpine we're not very happy about that we are going to tell Esteban Ocon to get on with it now as well because we don't want this Haas beating us in the sprint and getting in a position on us for Sunday's Grand Prix. Final lap of the sprint race and we can see the two Ferraris absolutely going at it. Hammer and Tong. If I'm Fred Vasseur, I think we've got to be saying, look, let's just chill out a bit, lads, because we've got this in the bag. It's Carlos Sainz, actually, who's got the lead of the Grand Prix now with the DRS. We take a look at our lads. We've pushed on the fuel. We've pushed on the tyres. We're giving it absolutely everything. Managing to overtake Kevin Magnussen. We've got a nice gap now. P9 and 10 will take that for Sunday. But it's all eyes on the final lap of this sprint race on this Ferrari battle and who is going to come out on top. I would suggest... Carlos Sainz is leading, of course, but Charles Leclerc down that start finish straight. If he gets DRS, as we just speed this on a little bit, let's just get it towards the final bits of the lap. We can see behind as well, Verstappen and Perez going at it a little bit. So let's just keep an eye on that little battle as well. We can see Perez, he isn't close enough to make a move, but will Charles Leclerc be when he gets DRS down this little big, long winding straight? A winding straight? Can you do that? Yeah, we're having a winding straight. Let's ride on board with Charles Leclerc. In fact, we're going to go visor cam. We're going to go visor cam for this final bit of this sprint race. Can Charles Leclerc beat his teammate, Carlos Sainz, with DRS enabled? And now it's full uh, pedal, full flat to the floor. Can he get this move done? He's got the DRS, but Charles Leclerc doesn't look like he's going to get Carlos Sainz. Sainz moves across to defend him, defend him again, and Carlos Sainz is going to win the sprint here in uh, in Baku. Leclerc P2, Verstappen P3, Perez P4. Our lads have got it undercover. Ninth and 10th got it in the bag. Let's get to the results. So as we saw, Carlos Sainz winning Leclerc P2, Verstappen P3, Perez P4. Hamilton did well up two places into P5. He's going to be delighted with that overtaking. Fernando Alonso dropped to P6, Russell P7, Stroll P8, and then it's 9th and 10th once again for the Alpines for Sunday's grid. Now let's get into the strategy for the full Grand Prix on Sunday. Right, guys. So based on that sprint race and what we saw in terms of the tyre wear, I'm pretty pretty confident of starting on the soft compound tire so that's what we're going to do for both cars obviously we'll bring the one in behind probably in the lap after can go for the undercut as well if we so wish but there is a high chance of safety cars as we've seen so p9 p10 let's get to it and get some more points this is what you've been waiting for it's the azerbaijan grand prix and it's lights out and away we go and away we go, and straight away we are looking at Esteban Ocon, who's up already, going around the outside of the Aston Martin in P8. Let's have a look at the tyre choices, because Sainz is on a fresh set of soft compound tyres. Verstappen on the softs already up into P3. Perez uh, on the medium, so we've got a fair, a fair 
yeah, fair variety of tyre choices. Obviously, our two guys, both on the soft compound tyres, we were comfortable on that tyre. Uh, it's just whether we'll be able to make the hards last towards the end. But like I said, our felt, tyre wear-wise, we looked pretty good. So as we lead away then, signs is in front of us happen. And straight away, we've got a red flag. Red flag, cars returning to the pit lane. Are we going to get a, uh, a look at this? It looks like we are. It's Oscar Piastre, who's very much been in the wards this weekend, locking up, smashing into the house, into the barriers, and it's a red flag once again. Right, guys, I'm going to take a massive, massive gamble here, and I don't know if it's going to pay off. I'm going to switch Pierre Gasly onto the hard compound of tyre and see if he can do practically the full race on them. 80 laps, it says it can do. I'm wondering if this might be a possibility. It's totally out of left field, but we're going to try it. We, we uh, Pierre Gasly, this could really be a make or break moment. Our race here resumes as we get back underway. In, we're on the hard compound tyre. If this works, we might as well call this series a Might as well call it there. Right, Esteban Ocon is away. We are going to... Apparently, they will get to 50%. We might even go light on the tyres. Maybe drop back a little I bit. I think we're going to go light on the tyres with Pierre Gasly and just see if he can sit in. That's the plan. Just see if he can sit in. Meanwhile, let Esteban Ocon get on with it, which he certainly is doing. Esteban Ocon is chasing after Lance Stroll in front of him. Carlos Sainz is in P1. Verstappen P2. Perez in P3. Leclerc dropped down to P4 now. So Hamilton there and Gasly already dropping a couple of positions. Not the greatest of resource for us. Kevin Magnussen, who was a pain of our life in the sprint race, managing to get us round the outside there. Um, rather an orthodox overtaking position, but K-Mag is up into P9, I believe. Is that P9? It is. Off con into P10. Uh, Gasly taking it easy on the tyres, but he's dropping positions like you've never seen. But I'm hoping he's going to be able to, once the DRS comes, just hold on to a couple of these cars and then get going from there. Carlos Sainz sets the new fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Uh, Verstappen is chasing onto the back of him, though. He will not be out of Carlos Sainz's mirrors, probably for the foreseeable and probably for the rest of this Grand Prix. Perez in P3, Leclerc P4, Alonso in P5. Ocon still latching onto Magnussen in P10 uh, and Gasly P14, but on a very, very wild strategy. Pierre Gasly starting to fight back a little bit on these hard compound tyres. He's sticking in the DRS of the Alfa Romeos, in front, in especially Joe. Uh, and starting to battle back a little bit now is Pierre Gasly. So we're pretty happy with that and how things are going on there. Ocon has lost the position to Sonoda, which is not ideal. But again, I would expect Ocon to get moving in a little while. We need to burn off some of this fuel as well no on both pressure. cars. So we're going to try and do that now and get back up to the cars in front. Uh, but Ocon, DRS is now enabled. Ocon is in this little battle. I do think P9 is probably the maximum without any retirements in front of him for Esteban Ocon today. Pierre Gasly. Who knows? Lap 6. Verstappen's crashed. Verstappen's crashed. We see here battling for the lead. And Carlos Sainz doesn't give him too much room when he clouts into the wall. Max Verstappen. That probably sums it up. Not too happy with that. Max Verstappen is going to be in to the pits, I would imagine. Ocon is in to P9. But Verstappen will now have to pick. Gasly still fighting away with Valtteri, uh, Sorry, with Joe Guan Yu. But Bottas and Sargent fighting in front might just help him out. Remember, Gasly's tyres will come into it in a few laps time. But Verstappen, as we just keep an eye on him, he's got damage from wing. I would expect to see him in very shortly. Lap eight. We do see Max Verstappen trundling out of the pit lane. Now, where is Pierre Gasly? Pierre Gasly still fighting away with Joe Guan Yu. Where is Verstappen? I'm going to come out back. Verstappen's going to come out dead last behind an Alpha Tauri of Nick De Vries and the Williams of Alexander Albon. So Gasly up into P13. Ocon now in to PA. He's overtaken Sonoda and Magnussen, who, because they're battling away, we're managing to pull away a little bit, which is absolutely ideal for us. Gasly just running along with Joe Guan Yu and having this continuous battle that he doesn't really need to be having. Lap 9. Lap 10, we've been having a, a chat with the strategists on the pit wall and we are going to change Esteban Ocon's strategy. He's going to run a bit longer on these soft compound tyres now and then switch on to the mediums towards the end. I'm hoping that that's going to pay dividends for us. Meanwhile, Pierre Gasly just tottering on now onto the back 
of Xiao Guan Yu, but this tyre management there is, is paying dividends at this moment in time. He should be able to make it all the way to the end on these hard compound tyres. Lap 11. Had another crash on circuit, and it's Kevin Magnussen, who remember we were battling with so vividly in the sprint race. Kevin Magnussen in P9 smashing into the wall there. He's a bit disappointed with that. They do well not to touch him. In fact, there was a little bit of a clip on one of the Alfa Romeos, but Pierre Gasly now. Pierre Gasly into P14. He's been conserving his tyres. You look at this. I think this might bloody work. You know, Esteban Ocon's pulled out a lovely lead to Sonoda. He's got nearly 10 seconds on those soft compound tyres. So fair play to him. And I reckon we're on a quick strategy with him as well. Uh, but Pierre Gasly, he's just got Max Verstappen who's just overtaken him. As Verstappen's flying back through in that Red Bull. Just getting a little clip there from uh, Magnussen as well. He should manage to get past Magnussen pretty quickly. Um, should Pierre Gasly. Let's have a look. If he does, we're just going to tell him at this moment just to overtake, be aggressive on the overtake um, and possibly use a little bit of DRS as, uh, ERS as well just to ensure that we don't drop back into the clutches of Zhou Guan Yu. Let's have a look, see if he does it out of this corner. Pierre Gasly getting on the ERS now and should quite easily manage to get past Magnussen, which he does. Great work from him. Um, and Gasly up in to P13 now. Unlucky for some, but not at the moment for him. Um, he's got 1.8 seconds gap to Verstappen, which isn't going to take Verstappen long to extend at all. But Verstappen currently fighting with Logan Sargent. So Gasly, I'm holding out hope for this strategy. We're conserving tyres with him. We just wanted to ensure that Zhou Guan Yu didn't catch up with us in the Alfa Romeo, lap 18. And on lap 20, we see Pierre Gasly using the DRS, getting past Logan Sargent. Remember, he's on the medium compound of tyres. It's starting to very much play into our hands, this with Pierre Gasly. How much he's going to get him on Ocon, I'm not too sure. But uh, Pierre Gasly now up into P12 and on the back of Valtteri Bottas for P11. Ocon still, but he's nearly 15 seconds now is the gap to Sonoda. If we just have a look at the uh, pre-race report and the time considerations, 22 seconds. 20 to 22 seconds is the pit stop time and Esteban Ocon will be coming up to that very, very shortly, lap 21. And Pierre Gasly, while conserving tyres once again, just breezing past an Alfa Romeo. Beautiful work from him. He's up in to P12 now is Pierre Gasly. Fantastic work from him getting the job done. And this looks like it's working. 4.7 seconds gap to Sonoda. And then we've got a little bit of a gap bet between them and the top running cars. But at the moment, Carlos Sainz looks like he's got this in the bag in P1. And Leclerc following him home in P2. And for the second time, we have got a red flag here in Azerbaijan. And it's Bottas and Sargent, I believe that is. To do clip the inside wall, clip Logan Sargent, red flag, and now we've got some very interesting decisions to make in terms of strategy once again. They're gutted in the Alfa Romeo garage, but we now are going to have a look. We were just about to switch Esteban Ocon onto the medium compound attire. Maybe that is what we do for both cars now. Let's have a look at the strategy. Both of our cars onto the medium compound attire. We restart once again. Will we have any more drama here in Baku? Who knows? But it is Carlos Sainz who's going to be probably the most disappointed man on the grid who will lead us away once again from Charles Leclerc Perez in P3. And it is Leclerc Sainz who gets a great start. Perez follows him through Leclerc in P2. Straight away, we're looking at Esteban Ocon, who's fighting with Max Verstappen, no less. If we have a look at the tyre chasers now, it's a mix. Perez and Leclerc have gone for the soft compound. Alonso on the hards. We're on the mediums with uh, with Max Verstappen. Gasly also on the medium compound of tyres. Sonoda's tyres will be dead by the end of this race. I can absolutely assure you of that. But now, on the medium compound of tyre, I would fancy us to hold on to these positions and Gasly to possibly get Sonoda. But as we've restarted, Sainz leads away from Perez now in P2. Leclerc P3, Verstappen, this has played into his hands beautifully. Battling with Esteban Ocon and he up into P8. A yellow flag on circuit and it is Yuki Sonoda in the beauty of it. You can see the two Alpine cars behind him. He's lost it in that left-hander. Sorry, you would be if you were in my team because Gasly and Ocon... Guess what positions we're in? We're in P9 and P10, as we usually are. But now both cars can just take it a little bit easier. We can nurse these tyres a little bit. We probably aren't going to catch the cars in front, which is the disappointing thing. But we are just going to go a little bit lighter on the tyres now, just to ensure that we get to the end. 
But we've got Alexander Albon chasing us. He's fighting with Norris. So I wouldn't expect him to be catching us. I would expect P9 and 10 to be it for our Alpines today. Meanwhile, at the front, we keep going back to it. Signs in P1. To be fair, he should now be running away from these two cars behind. Perez and Leclerc on the softs. Their tyres are going to die. Alonso, don't write him out of this. But Alonso currently battling with Hamilton into this tight left-hander. Hamilton goes to the outside. Alonso defends well and holds on to P4. Verstappen in P6. Can he make a charge and get back up with Lewis Hamilton? 6.8 seconds says he probably can't Russell P7 Stroll P8 and then it's Ocon and Gasly P9 and 10 15 laps to go Carlos Sainz has regained the lead point uh, six tenths of a second now between him and Perez the tyres on these two behind him are wearing off but saying that Charles Leclerc just set the new fastest lap of the Grand Prix so fair play to him um, both our guys managing tyre attempts very well and the fuel as well so both our guys doing a fantastic job 5.2 seconds gap to Norris uh, but we just cannot catch the Aston Martin of Lance Stroll is it going to be a 1-2 for Ferrari in Baku like it was in the sprint he joined us back on lap 45 where Pierre Gasly has so, managed to catch Esteban Ocon and we have told them yeah. You are allowed to race, just race fairly and keep it clean. So on lap 45, we're going to have a bit of racing between the two Alpine drivers. I'm sure they'll both fancy it. The tyres, not too much difference between them, not too much difference on the fuel. And we've got 13 seconds gap to Norris, so we can enjoy a little bit of fun between the two Alpine teammates. Lap 45. It's lap of the Grand Prix, and this is it. Sainz versus Ocon. For P9, we're letting them race, keeping it clean. And to be fair to them, they've pulled out a nearly 20-second lead on Lando Norris. But look at this for clean racing here. Ocon and Gasly. Gasly currently in P9. Remember, both of our drivers currently sat on four points. Whoever wins this little battle between them will be the lead driver going into the next race. So fair play to them at the front. We can see Carlos Sainz has managed to win the race with the fastest lap as well as he comes across the line to win the Azerbaijan Grand Prix from Leclerc. But we're going to keep his eye very firmly on Gasly and Ocon for this inter-team battle here at Alpine in Baku. Who is going to get P9? Who's your money on? Tell me down in the comments, who do you think is going to get this P9 here? This in a few seasons time, maybe the battle for the championship in Abu Dhabi. Who knows? But at this moment in time, it is Gasly versus Ocon. It's four tenths is the gap between them as Esteban Ocon is giving it absolutely everything and Esteban Ocon will get DRS down this start finish straight. Lance Stroll sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Will Esteban Ocon manage to take back P9? He's got that DRS wide open, but it's not going to be enough. Pierre Gasly gets P9 and Ocon at P10. They have become very familiar positions for us, but it's double points once again. Let's get to the podium. Lando Norris, currently on our screens, heads back to his team. And Carlos Sainz heading up to the podium now. The Spaniard adding another to his record. That gives them their first win of the season, and it was really well deserved. And before they get back to work, I think it's time to cool off here in Azerbaijan. There we go then, guys. The two Ferraris once again. That's a fantastic win for them. That's the first time that Max Verstappen has not won this season. And it, that will be celebrated very much in Marinello. And they didn't manage to smash any of the winning trophies, which is always a pleasure for the trophy makers. Carlos Sainz winning them from Leclerc. Perez in P3. Alonso P4. Verstappen, has he only got himself to blame for being a little bit too aggressive into Turn 1 on Sainz? Who knows? Hamilton in P6. Russell P7. Stroll P8. And the pace of our car. It says we're the fifth best car and we are certainly showing it p9 and 10 for the two alpine drivers lando norris contender for for driver of the day gaining nine positions driver standings wise max verstappen leads by uh he's got what that's what's that that's uh 21 points there we go quick maths once again verstappen from size perez in p3 leclerc p4 uh ninth and tenth but gasly now is one point in front of his teammate constructor standings wise red bull lead ferrari by 22 points more quick maths aston martin in p3 mercedes p4 and we stay in p5 
five, gaining three points. And we've now got a 10 point cushion to Haas. Even I can do 11 minus one. I hope you've enjoyed that. It's a bit of a longer episode with it being a sprint weekend. We'll let our two guys fight towards the end. And let me know, who do you think is going to be the lead driver at the end of this season? Who's going to take the most points for our Alpine team? We'll see you on the next one. Ta-ra.